Outlander. Okay. Medieval Gibbeting Cage. All right, in this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create something similar to this medieval gibbeting cage. I will be doing this in Blender 2.8. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, first thing we need to do is go ahead and get rid of the cube because we do not need the cube. I'm going to go ahead and turn on screencast key so you can see what I'm doing. Make the size a little bit bigger so that if you're blind like me, you can still see it. Get rid of the cube, and I'm going to hide the lamp and the camera to get them out of the way. First thing we need to do is start off with a circle. So go up here to add, mesh, and then a circle. I'm going to press 1 to go into front side view. Zoom in just a little bit and then drag this down. Now I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. And I need to build this mesh but do so in a certain way where it creates the individual bands or the elements of the cage. And at the bottom of the cage we have a circle going around it or not really a circle, more like a strip of metal going all the way around the cage. So we need to go ahead and create that part. So press E for extrude and then Z for the Z axis and then 0.25 and that will make the bottom strip that goes around the cage. And the cage gets bigger in the middle so let's go ahead and uh, extrude it out again but this would be a larger extrusion because this be like the area between the horizontal strips or horizontal bands going around the cage. So E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, and then one. But we need to scale that up to make it just a little bit bigger because it does get wider in the middle. So press S for scale and then 1.25, enter. Now we need to make another horizontal strip like this. E for extrude, Z, 0.25. Now we need to make another long section. E for extrude, Z, one, enter. And now another horizontal strip like this. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, 0.25, enter. And then just continue this pattern like this for another probably three times. We'll zoom out a little bit so we can see it better, or see more of it, rather. E for extrude, one, and the Z axis, enter. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, 0.25, enter. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, 1, enter. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, 0.25, enter. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, 1, enter. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, 0.25, enter. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, 1, enter. Now this would be the top, we're getting towards the top and we need to make it narrower again. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm going to scale this down. S for scale, 0.5, enter. Now I want to kind of round this off a little bit. So I'm gonna press E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, and then just drag this up to about here and then press S for scale and scale it in to about there. Now I'm going to press E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, bring it up to about there, and then S for scale to scale it in and bring it in to about there. And now this top part, we'll just press F on the keyboard to fill that in. I'm going to press 1 to go and make sure I'm pressing 1 to make sure I'm in front side view. Now, at this point, we need to separate the mesh into two separate pieces. That way uh, we can use a modifier on each individual piece separately. So at this point let's go ahead and press Z on the keyboard to bring up this menu and then put it on wireframe. And then we'll click up here to put this on face select. 
And the reason why we're putting on wireframe is because we want to be able to select through the mesh. Now we're going to press the letter B for box select and then the left click to drag. And then we're going to select the top portion. And see how it's selected through the mesh? All right. Now we're going to go through and select every one of the horizontal strips. B for box select, left click to drag. B for box select, left click to drag. B for box select, left click to drag. And as you can see, it's selected all the way around, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. So at this point, press Shift D to duplicate those faces and then press enter. Now press the letter P to bring up this menu and then choose separate by selection. And now we have another mesh over here which is just made up of the horizontal strips. Now press tab to exit edit mode and then hide the new portion then press tab to go back into edit mode. Now we need to select the vertical strips. And in this case, it's gonna be much easier if we put it in solid view. So press Z to bring up this menu and then choose solid. We need to choose every fourth vertical row. So in this case, right click to select and then shift right click to select the next one. and go all the way from top to bottom. And like I said, we need to select every fourth row. So basically skip three, one, two, three, and then sh shift right click, 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 and shift right click. And if for some reason you accidentally right click without holding the shift key down it will deselect everything and you don't want that to happen but to fix that just press Control Z to undo and then shift right click and then just continue this shift right click selecting every fourth vertical row all the way around the mesh And now just double check, make sure you have all of the vertical strips selected, every fourth one. Now what you want to do at this point is go up here to select and choose invert. That way it selects every bit of the mesh except for what you selected previously. And then press delete and then it brings up this menu and choose faces. Now all that's left are the vertical strips. Now press tab to exit edit mode. Come over here and turn back on the, the other part of the mesh. Now zoom in and you can see that there is no thickness to it, which is the next thing we're going to fix. And it's why we had to separate the mesh because we need to add thickness to the horizontal strips coming outward and then we need to add uh, thickness to the vertical strips going inward. That's why we need it to um, do this in two separate pieces. So with the horizontal strip selected, go over here to the modifiers tab, add modifier, and then choose solidify. And then set this to 0 0.025 enter and then press apply now select the vertical strip add modifier add uh, solidify modifier and put this on minus 0 0.025 enter and see if we look at it now it looks a whole lot more like a cage it's got thickness to it like two pieces of metal up against each other and click apply. Now press one on the keyboard, zoom out so you can see the mesh, 
and then press B for box select and then just select it so that way you're selecting both of them at the same time and then press Control J to join both of those back into a single mesh. Now what we need to do is press tab to go back into edit mode and we need to create the individual bolts or rivets that go through the mesh to hold each piece together. Now this is just for looks. Alright, the easiest way to go about doing this is first we need to set up two materials. We need to set up a material uh, for the cage for basically all the metal and then a separate material for the rivets. For, so we're going to go over here to the materials tab, click new, and then name this material cage. And then we're going to click the plus symbol, then click new, and then name this material bolt, B-O-L-T. All right, now what we want to do, we need to put, make sure this is still on face select, and then go through and right click to select every one of these locations where a bolt or a rivet would go through to fasten the hardware together. And remember, I am shift right clicking. I'm holding the shift key down in order to right click. That way I'm not deselecting what I have already selected. And just go all the way around the entire cage and select every one of those intersecting locations. Alright, now just make sure you have every one of them selected, which I do. Now what you want to do, we need to inset these faces. So we want to press I, the letter I on the keyboard, and then move the mouse in so that it's down to about that size. And if you see what we're doing we're actually creating an extra square and the reason why we're doing that is because we want to extrude this part out that way that can actually become the bolt or the rivet that's holding the pieces together so now to extrude it we come over here to the extrude menu left click hold it down until it, that little menu pops up and then go down to extrude individually. Now left click and then just extrude out just a little bit to about there. Now press 7 on the keyboard to go on the top side view. And you may want to zoom in a little bit so you can work with this better. Now we need to go into wireframe. So press Z to bring up this menu, the letter Z, and then choose wireframe. And the reason why we're putting this in wireframe is because we want to be able to select every, all of these faces that make up each of these bolts. So now press C, the letter C, and this is called circle select and then left click and drag over just the ends remove it over left or pardon me press C and left click drag and select all of those faces and then just do that all the way around But now if we 
zoom out and look all of them are selected except for the bottom ones the bottom ones it's only the faces that are selected so what we can do we can put this on press Z to go back into solid view and then shift right click each individual face or we could do this press Z to go back into wireframe and this is the way I actually prefer go back press 7 to go back in the top view and then do it like we did before but we'll have to clean up our mistakes after the fact press C to go into circle select now we run a risk in accidentally selecting like those faces and if we do just middle mouse press the middle mouse button and to undo that and that's one reason why it's in more complicated meshes it wouldn't be very easy to do it this way because there would be too much other mesh in the way but with this mesh it's fairly simple so we can still do it that way so press C left click to select all of it all right looks like all of them are selected now I'm going to press the letter Z and go back into solid view and on this bolt material I'm just going to make this a dark color so we, we can see the difference right away and with all of those selected and with the bolt material highlight it click assign now press the letter press uh, a so that everything is selected press u and then choose smart uv project all right now go ahead and press tab to exit edit mode well I forgot we still need to add the floor so at the bottom of this cage so go press tab to go back into edit mode and then up here put this on uh, line select zoom in press A twice to deselect everything and then on one of these edges for the inside hold down the alternate key ALT and then right click that way it selects the entire loop all the way around and then press the letter F to fill now press A to select everything and then press U and then smart UV project now press tab to exit edit mode and now we can set up the materials go to the cage and then over here choose click on that button and then choose image texture and then down here click on open and I have this material right here I will put the link to this material in the description of this video that material uh, it will be called rusty metal and again the link will be in the description of this video now on the uh, bolt itself I'm just gonna give that a let's just say a, a fully metallic and give it kind of a leave it at 0.5 and that should be fine for that and then the cage I uh, forgot we need to change the roughness put it at about 0.7 around 0 0.7 0 0.75 and then change the clear coat run that run the clear coat up to about 
Now let's go ahead and add a floor. Add mesh and then plane and then just scale that up by pressing S and then dragging the mouse and then press G for grab and then Z for the Z axis and then just drop it down just a tiny bit that way it's not intersecting the cage. Now let's go ahead and turn on the lamp we'll press 1 on the keyboard to go on the front side view I'm going to select the lamp, press G and bring it out to about here and put this on about 25 press 0 to go on the camera view over here on the side panel choose to lock camera to view that way you can navigate through the camera and I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit All right, now if we press uh, this button to go into rendered view, we can see our cage. I'm going to go ahead and change the um, background to completely black. And there you go. That's pretty much the cage. If we, we can do one more thing to it, or actually two more things to it to make it look a little bit better. And right now you can see the little bit the little bitty bends and our creases in the cage right there we can get rid of that by simply going up here by selecting the cage going up here to object and choose shade smooth but now it looks kind of rounded on the edges which we don't want so with the cage still selected come over here to the modifiers tab add modifier and choose edge split and in my opinion that looks much better click apply but the material still looks kind of flat so here's my suggestion let's go ahead and pull this window over change this window to a shader editor and this right here, go over here to the materials tab and choose the cage. Make sure the cage is highlighted. I'm going to slide this over just a little bit more so we got more room. I'm going to drag this over so we have more room to work with. Click on the rusty metal JPEG uh, image texture and press Shift D. Bring that down here and then go up here to add and then type in click on search and type in bump b-u-m-p and then click bump and bring this bump shader in right here connect the color output to the normal and connect the normal output to displacement and then change this from color to non-color data. And as you can see, the now it looks really, really coarse, but it's a little bit too coarse. So how we're going to fix that is slide this back over, change, uh, go ahead and hover over this window, press tab to go into edit mode, and then over here change this to the UV image editor uh, here it is and then this right here is our unwrapped mesh so press A so that everything is selected and press S for scale and click 5 on the keyboard and then press enter slide this back over press tab to exit edit mode and now it pretty much looks a whole lot better it's not quite as coarse it looks definitely definitely looks old and rusty and at this point I'm gonna click render render image 
And there you go. Alrighty, if you have any questions, let me know, and I will try to help you in the comments. Thanks for watching. Later, people. And don't forget, the image texture is in, a link to that's in the description of the video. Later.